Какой treatment of common meetings? Добрый вечер, глубоко уважаемые участники конференции. Сегодня хотелось бы поговорить о лечении образования толстой кишки. First, shortly about endoscopic mucosal resection (EMR). Первая часть лекции посвящена мукозоктомии при помощи через колоноскопическую. This is an old video, but I'd like to show you a typical case of EMR. На данном видео типичный случай мукозоктомии. So the region was in the rectum and 20 millimeters in diameter. Образование располагалось в прямой кишке до 15 миллиметров в диаметре. I started the injection at the proximal site. Инъекция начинается с проксимального участка опухоли. And added some solution at the both sides. Далее инъекция раствора происходит по бокам опухоли. And the technique is withdraw the needle during the injection. Withdraw the needle. Здесь надо обратить внимание на то, как вкалывается игла по последний слой для инъекции. I use the big snare for a big lesion. Для большого образования используется достаточно большая петля. And it is important to include normal mucosa, not only the lesion, but normal mucosa is very important. Важный аспект захватить здоровую слизистую для обеспечения And resect it slowly and without bleeding or perforation. Образование удаляется без каких-либо признаков кровотечения или перфорации. So the injection and the lift of the lesion is very important for EMR technique. Инъекция раствора и, соответственно, поднятие образования – это важная составляющая мукозоктомии. I'll show you another region, 25 millimeters in diameter. The pit bottom was type 4, type 5i, low grade, slightly irregular. I didn't think the region was deeply invasive, so I decided to perform EMR. Субъективное образование не представляло сомнений, что оно доброкачественное, поэтому было решено выполнить мукозоктомию. So I started injection at the proximal site. Site. Инъекция начинается с проксимального края опухоли. Sometimes I prick the needle just through the region. Иногда инъекция проходит прямо через толщу образования. And there's some solution at this side too. С другой стороны происходит инъекция. And again, at the center it was not lifted very well, so I added some solution at the center too. Поскольку в центре образование очень хорошо приподнялось, добавляется раствор прямо через толщу опухоли. I put the snare between the lesion and the muscle layer, so just in between. Накидывается петля с захватом здоровых тканей. Cut it slowly, and it was successful. The pathological diagnosis was intramucosal cancer in adenoma. And another lesion, 35 millimeters in diameter. The pit bottom was type 3L to type 4. I started the injection up just at the center. And put the snare around the region. And resected it. And I collected the specimen with the net. You should confirm the margin carefully. And sometimes I suture the wound after EMR. Not always. 
Но не всегда, но иногда скрывается при помощи клипса дефекта, продававшегося. The lithium was 35 mm in diameter, but it was just hybrid adenoma. Образование до 3,5 мм в диаметре, но по данным, которые морфологическое исследование, высокодифференцированное аденокарцинома. Uh, another case uh, done six years ago at Yokohama. Другой случай был выполнен шесть лет назад в Yokohama. This lesion, uh, 23 mm in diameter, looked a slightly de depressed at the center. Образование 23 мм в диаметре и в центре визуализируется депрессия. But the pit bottom was just 3L. Однако тип ямочного рисунка 3 мм. So I didn't think it was deeply invasive. I decided to perform EMR. Опухоль не вызывала подозрения, что имеется глубокая инвазия, поэтому была выполнена мукозотомия. The pit bottom was type 4 and the network pattern was just benign. I injected and lifted the region and put the snares around the region and the resection was successful. Uh, it is important to uh, resect not only the region but you should include the normal mucosa surrounding the region. The pathological diagnosis was adenocarcinoma and adenoma. Uh, the depth was intermucosal. Патологическое заключение аденокарцинома с фоксом аденокарцинома с инвазией слизистой пластинки, мышечной пластинки, слизистой оболочки. Another region, 32 mm in diameter. Следующее образование 32 mm в диаметре. The pit bottom was type 4. Тип ямочного рисунка 4. Not deeply invasive. Что означает неглубокую инвазию? Again, I uh, decided to perform the EMR and I injected it like this. And the rese resection was successful. I resected the region, including surrounding the lower mucosa. The pathology revealed that it was in adenocarcinoma in adenoma, uh, intermucosa. So during uh, EMR technique, success of EMR depends mostly on good lift by the injection. Now I'm going to talk about piecemeal EMR. Следующая часть лекции посвящена мукозоктомии медного фрагментации. For larger region, piecemeal EMR is required. Большие образования могут быть удалены медного фрагментации. It was done in St. Petersburg many years ago. The region was 50 millimeters in diameter. Данное образование было удалено в конференции в Санкт-Петербурге в 2006 году до 50 мм. I started the injection at 15.20 minutes, 15, uh, 3 o'clock. So withdraw the needle during the injection, that's very important. And the first cut should be as big as possible. So it was the first cut. I removed about three centimeters. And this is the second cut. And third cut. And this is the fourth and final cut. 
и, соответственно, четвертый So it was 3:28. So it took only eight mi minutes uh, for the injection and the resection of the total region. So this EMR is very quick and is not bad. I'll show you uh, another region. Uh, the diameter was 50 millimeters. It was located at the cecum. And the region extended slightly into the iliocecal valve. And I decided to perform piecemeal EMR and it was cut in 10 pieces. I collected all the specimens and the pathological diagnosis was just benign adenoma. Были удалены все фрагменты, извлечены для патологического исследования, которые показали, что была тубулярная тонома. But you must be careful because piecemeal resection is the most important risk factor for local recurrence. Но надо быть аккуратным, потому что при удалении элементов фрагментации это наиболее важный фактор риска местного рецидива. Some literature say that when the number of pieces is five or more, the recurrence rate is very high. But in this case, uh, I follow up the patient uh, four months later. Luckily enough, there was no recurrence. So now I'm going to talk about endoscopic submucosal dissection (ESD). If you are uh, good enough, you can resect such a large region. Uh, four years ago, I performed a lab demonstration for ESD. I removed a uh, pretty big lesion like this. But be careful because perforation rate is very high in ESD. The data is a little bit old, but uh, the perforation rate is still a little bit high compared with the other procedures. In piecemeal EMR, with drawing of the specimens and the historical judgment are difficult. And the local recurrence rate uh, is rather high, so recurrence is not rare. On the other hand, in ESD, withdrawal of specimen is easy, historical judgment is easy, and the recurrence is very rare. Аналогично при удалении опухоли методом последствий диссекции, удаление препарата и гистологическое исследование его просты, а частота рецидивов крайне низка.
But ESD is time consuming and cost is high, perforation is not rare, and training is difficult. Тем не менее, данная процедура занимает длительное время, высока стоимость данных манипуляций, частота перфорации не настолько высока, как ожидаемо, и требует длительного обучения. So, thus, ESD is still demanding and corrective regions. Место последствий действия на образование на последствии действия до сих пор обсуждается. ESD or PCM EMR? That is the question. We have Japanese guideline for corrector ESD and EMR. I was one of the members. So, there are some statements in Japan's guideline. In the treatment of carcinoma in cancer, envelope resection is the principal approach. But piecemeal resection is also acceptable when the possibility of submucosal invasion can be definitely excluded. ESD is the most suitable method for unblock resection. And piecemeal EMR may make it difficult to establish a pathological diagnosis of the invasion depth and to determine a free resection margin. Морфологическое исследование в качестве для установления глубины инвазии и оценки границ резекции. And as I explained before, the number of resected pieces must be minimized, and the region suspected to contain a carcinoma should not be sectioned. Количество удаленных фрагментов должно быть минимизировано, а область, которая содержит фокус карцинома, не I explained about LSTs yesterday. And here is a pseudo depressed type. The pseudo depressed type is associated with multifocal invasion. And the foci of invasion are often difficult to predict. In addition, soon the first type is frequently associated with fibrosis. So therefore, EMR is not suitable for soon the first type. I will show you an example. This was simply the first time LSD. It may look very hard, but uh, NBI pattern and PIT pattern was just slightly irregular. So we did not think it was deeply invasive, not deeply invasive. We decided to perform ESD for this region. But after the injection, non-lifting sign was possible. So EMR is impossible. Uh, 
And there was a moderate fibrosis. Moderate fibrosis. But the dissection was successful. And the pathological diagnosis was minimally, very minimally invasive cancer. Although the lesion was not lifted very well, endoscopic treatment was successful. And I'm going to talk about little about the biopsy. This lesion was biopsy previously. Uh, this is the scar after biopsy. But otherwise, the lesion did not look like deeply invasive lesion. After the injection, the lift was not good. Therefore, I decided to perform ESD. The diagnosis was intramucosal cancer. Another case, biopsy at the center, and there is a fold convergence at the center. And here is the scar after biopsy. But otherwise, the lesion looked rather benign. After injection, no lifting sign was positive. I performed ESD, but there was severe fibrosis. Anyway, the treatment was successful, successful and the pathological diagnosis was just benign at the moment. So, benign lesion like this required ESD because of the previous biopsy. So, our recommendation says that in the case of superficial type lesions, the biopsy may cause fibrosis and endoscopic treatment will be difficult. Therefore, it is better to avoid biopsy for making a preoperative diagnosis. Preoperative diagnosis means a pre-treatment of EMR rays, ESD, not surgical operation. There are many reasons for avoiding biopsy before endoscopic resection. It requires one week before the pathological report, and this interferes with on-site resection. You must wait. A small biopsy specimen may not represent the nature of the whole lesion. Uh, 
And the result of biopsy will not change the treatment option in the future. Cancer death is most important for determining the treatment option, but it is not diagnosed by biopsy. And as I said, it is most important that in superficial regions, it may uh, biopsy cause fibrosis and which would interfere with endoscopic resection. So, to summarize the indication for correctly ESD, briefly, uh, number one is neoplasms larger than 20 millimeters in diameter, but confined to the mucosa or invading only minimally to the submucosal layer. Nervous reaches smaller than 20 millimeters, but unable to be lifted due to fibrosis. And yesterday we discussed about uh, hybrid ESD. Indications for hybrid ESD include lesions which is small enough for unlock EMR but is not lifted. Another indication is lesions which is better receptive unblock but is slightly too big for unblocked EMR, but is not so big as requires pure ESD. And this indication includes lesion uh, 15 to 25 millimeters in diameter, such as SSAP, LST, pseudodepressor, or intramucosal or slightly invasive cancer. So I'm going to use another file. Now I'm going to talk about uh, technique uh, for ESD. Yesterday, during my lab demonstration, I showed some techniques, so I'll explain it in detail. In the stomach, ESD is done with marking. And usually, total circumferential mucosal incision is made. And after that, some mucosal dissection is performed. But in the colorectum, step by step mucosal incision and submucosal dissection is done. And we usually perform ESD without marking. So this is the first incision in the mu in mucosa layer. And dissect the submucosal layer. And mucosal incision again. 
And I think that some mucosa is there. So step by step, mucosa incision, dissection, mucosa incision, and dissection. Шаг за шагом последовательно выполняется разрез слизистой и сердце последствует диски. These are instruments I usually use for colorectal ESD. Но как раз специальные инструменты наиболее часто используемые в последствии сердца. So I'll show you some techniques. And especially what is important is techniques for better visualization of the submucosa layer. The most simple way is clip flap method. You put the clip at the end of the mucosa and because of the gravity the clip will go down and you can have a good view of the sun mucosa layer. На край опухоли вешается клипса, которая под силой тяжести оттягивает край опухоли, соответственно, открывает обзор на отлистый слой. This technique was published by Dr. Yamamoto in Osaka. Данная техника была опубликована и предложена Dr. Yamamoto. And there are some other techniques, especially in the stomach. It is called the traction method. Utilizing a clip with line, clip with line, clip with line. Данный слайд демонстрирует метод тракции при помощи клипса, который фиксирована держалка для оттягивания для тракции. It can be done anti-grade like this. Данный Данный метод может быть использован, когда сила тяжести не помогает. So you put the clips at the proximal end of the region. Клипс вешается на максимальный край опухоли. And it also can be done uh, retroflex. Также может быть данная техника использована при ретрофлексе. Uh, In retroflex you put clip at the uh, distal end of the region. Uh, при so in the case of stomach, you put a dental floss to the clip. And you reinsert the gastroscope into the stomach together with this line. But in case of colorectal ESD, it is a little bit troublesome to reinsert the scope with line. So in the colorectum, if you would like to use click with line method, you put a fridge into the vertical channel beforehand, before starting ESD. You put a thread like this. В данном случае вы проводите держалку через рабочий канал колоноскопа до выполнения манипуляции. And you intubate the scope and start ESD. Вы проводите нитку, проводите колоноскоп, вы начинаете последствия сердца. And uh, after dissecting some part of the region, после удаления некоторой части новообразования, you put the click to the end of the thread and pull the thread from the anus and the clip will go into the working channel. So you tie the thread to the clip and cut the extra amount of thread and uh, put the clip into the sheet. So insert the sheet into the working channel and pull the thread out from the anus. And if the clip is out from the working channel, 
You shift the plate to the, the end of the region. And after this application of click and thread, uh, the region looks like this. So you can have a better visual, visualization of submucosal layer. I performed live, dem live demonstration during Asia Pacific Digestive Week, which was held in Kobe last year. There was a live transmission from our university to uh, convention venue. So uh, the region was 35 millimeters in diameter. Uh, yeah, this is the clip with line. And put the clip, shoot the clip up to the end of the region. After that, you can have a good visualization of some mucosal layer. Although there was much fat at the sub mucosal layer. So, this yellow substance is rich fat. Mm. But the dissection was rather smooth because uh, there is the clip, so the traction by the line makes it makes it easy. And this was the final part. So the region was 35 millimeters in diameter. And I showed you yesterday pocket creation method. Or perhaps you can call it a tunneling technique. So for pocket creation method, you uh, cut mucosa layer uh, just just short distance. And dissect the some mucosa layer like this. From the surface, it looks like this, and in the submucosa layer, it is like this. After creating a big pocket, you make mucosal incision at the proximal end. And the tunnel is completed. But you should keep both sides attached to the wall. After this, mucosal incision at both sides are, is made. And, and dissection is completed. Uh, this was pretty large region, 55 millimeters in diameter. Uh, I performed this case uh, during the live demonstration course, which is held by myself. I made a mucosal incision at the distal end of the region. And pocket was created. And so, as just as in yesterday, uh, 
this is the completion of the tunnel. You can see the proximal side of the region. After that, both sides are dissected. I'll show you the video. So now creating a pocket in the sun mucosa layer. And some vessels are coagulated. And now the tunnel is completed. You can see the proximal side. After this, you will widen the tunnel at both sides. Like this. So, the left side and now at the right side. I was widening the tunnel. Then at the end, I cut the both sides. So the good part of pocket creation method is the specimen, the lesion is very stable and you can keep the good visual, visualization of the submucosa layer. So this is the mucosa defect after the treatment and this is the specimen. It was slightly embedded to the submucosa layer. So, uh, and do you have yeah. So after uh, at the end of my lecture, I will talk a little about the suturing of the mucosa defect in patients with high risk for bleeding. One method is this is the mucosa defect, and you make small incision surrounding the mucosa defect. And put the clips uh, between those small incisions. I'll show the video. Um, small incision is made to the both sides of the mucosa defect like this. And you put the clip just into this small incision. And shoot the clip. The video looks a little bit slow. <laughs> So uh, maybe next case, uh, the similar case, so you can identify small incisions. So you put the clip just into the small incision. So otherwise, clip will slip and you cannot suture the wound. But with a small incisions, it is easier to suture the wound. So, such it like this. And another method is click with a small loop. You put the small loop at the, the side. And you hook the loop with another clip. 
and fix the loop at the opposite side. Then the Mirkosa defect is narrower in width. Here is narrower. And you can suture the wound like this. I performed this case also in the live demonstration course. The hybrid ESD was performed. So the patient was high risk of bleeding. I put the clip with the loop. And now I'm hooking the loop with another clip. And fix the loop at the opposite side of the mucosal defect. Now the wound is narrower and it is easier to suture with clips. The defect was completely sutured. So there was no bleeding afterwards. So I showed you the technique of EMR, piecemeal EMR, and just uh, some tips for safe and quick ESD. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. So, 
T1A means the <coughs> T1A means the invasion depth is less than 1,000 micrometers. That is one millimeter, less than one millimeter invasion depth from the muscular semicosi to the front of the invasion. Данная классификация подразумевает движение в базе в 1 мм под собственной мышцы пластинки, если это оболочки, до фокуса. So, formally it was called SM1. So, T1A is the same as SM1. Это аналогичная классификация в кучу SM1, в один из SM1. Так, ну еще вопросы, пожалуйста. Очень хорошие ответы, вопросы. Вас, вас не возникло вопрос? Ну, я эту лекцию очень люблю, она действительно такая познавательная. Давайте еще раз поблагодарим за все. И за лекцию, и за... Ну, позвольте мне прокомментировать немножко доклад. Что всегда вызывает, ну, в Москве уже в меньшей степени, а все-таки, когда большая наша аудитория эндоскопическая, особенно когда мы присутствуют гастроэнтерологи, это все-таки, почему же не надо делать биопсию? По-моему, потому что Кашита нам ответил, почему не надо делать все эти биопсии. Особенно при госпитале вызывает. Очень часто мы получаем со стороны пациентов, которые уже была выполнена по лоскопии, и как правило, они приходят с биопсией и приходят к образованию. Так вот, удалять их потом очень сложно, потому что вместе взятия биопсии, к сожалению, возникает перевоз. Поэтому очень сложно потом сделать лоскопическое решение. Мы у себя давно, уже, наверное, года 3-4, поступаем таким образом. Если эндоскопист считает, по всем своим признакам, что это образование эндоскопического удаления, то есть не берется, берется эндоскопическое удаление, и весь материал уже отдается в архив. Если эндоскопист по тем или иным причинам считает, что все-таки здесь эндоскопическое вмешательство не получится, а скорее нужна хирургическая операция, вот здесь надо взять биопсию, чтобы наши хирурги знали, в принципе, с чем они имеют дело. Потому что у них давно уже все врачи верят эндоскопистам, у нас, к сожалению, пока еще этого нет. Даже в стенах нашего института мы пытаемся до сих пор доказать нашим клиницистам, доказать нашим хирургам, что мы можем на складе визуальных признаков ставить свои предположительные диагнозы. Вот в морфолог Александр, нам уже верит, что мы это можем. Правильно, Александр? Вот она верит, да, а хирурги пока еще если недоверие относится к нашим возможностям. Но это действительно существует в рамках нашего института, потому что есть и в Петербурге это есть, и в Ростове это есть, там, где хорошая аппаратура, там и высоко полицейные эндоскописты, которых можно назвать даже Маркволовичем. Поэтому большое спасибо еще раз.